Philip? Uh, you mentioned that other countries had felt the need to issue moratoriums on deep water drilling. Um, Norway is one of them. Uh, I don't think so, sir. They've suspended until 2011. I don't think they've called a moratorium on drilling, sir. I think what they've done is that they have suspended the granting of new licenses in northern deeper areas, but that does not mean that they have stopped deep water drilling. Well, it, it implies that they are awaiting developments and finding out what happened in the Gulf of Mexico. I mean, my understanding is, is, is that there are predominantly gas fields in Norway, yes? If that's the case, why would they suspend issuing licenses more than say UK where it's, we're talking about oil. Why do you think, there's, why do you think they've made that decision? I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm afraid you'd have to ask them. I, I, my view would be that there is no case given the strength of the regulatory regime that we have in here and the fact that we know the risks that are involved in the drilling of these wells and have engineering practices that can deal with them that we should impose any blanket moratorium on the drilling of wells in the UK continental shelf. I mean, do they, do, do they have, like, different procedures about assessment of oil spill plans? And I, I, don't, I don't believe so, I'm afraid. I'm not an expert on the Norwegian uh, regime, but I think it has a number of elements that are similar to our regime and mm -hmm. uh, to be distinguished from, for example, the more prescriptive Amer um, uh, American regime. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, does some... Um, Osprey have a plan to review oil spill response plans that have been submitted before the Gulf of Mexico incident? Sorry, just, just restate the question. Well, the, 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 the oil spill review plans that have been submitted as part of an application for the last thing. Are you seeking to, are you looking to review them, the ones that have been submitted prior to the Gulf of Mexico? I mean, I say that, I mean, in the light of the incident. I mean, I've, I've <laughs> looked at the, um, Oil response plan for the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, and it's I don't know. I mean, I, it's a weighty tome, so mm. I, haven't, I can't say I've read it, mm. I've reviewed it, and it it there's sort of evidence of a bit of a cut and paste job about it. And I just wonder whether Osprey might want to review plans that have been submitted to date. By yes, the I, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, absolutely, as part of it. Because, I mean, my I mean specifically. I mean, I give you one example. There's a there's one, there's a map in it, and it has an icon for a walrus. Yes. Yeah, we... Well, I mean, you don't get walruses in the Gulf of Mexico. No. No. Well, we, 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 I mean, we, I mean, yeah, we have seen these stories yeah, in the just, press, and I, yeah, I understand yeah. what you're saying. And actually, that's one of the, of, of the things about the whole Osprag uh, constituency, because the constituency is the oil industry, both producers and contractors, the regulator, the trade unions, the Coast Guard agency, so that actually all of us are looking and saying, well, what is the constituent part of an oil spill response plan? First of all, prevention. Secondly, early containment and capping what's been left from a condo. And thirdly, what happens to the oil when it's released from a well. Now, this is being done together. So, you know, if there was such a so, so, you know, farcical as, uh, 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 as a walrus mm. and, uh, you know, we're, we're together in the same room. The entire industry, including regulators, mm -hmm. is looking at have we got a real, have we got the provisions, have we got the right mm -hmm. plans, and so then, it, of course, it becomes, you wouldn't expect the oil spill response plan to vary dramatically from one company to another. It should be, because we're drawing on communal resources. Yeah, I mean, the, the size seems, the size of it yeah. certainly differed. Yeah. I mean, I've seen them, some at 60 pages, this one's almost 600. Mm. Um, and in terms of spill volumes, I mean, you make a projection, as I understand it, like a credible spill volume in sure. terms of... I mean, clearly they underestimated how long it was going to take to, to, to cap that yes. well. Um, are we happy with the sort of projections for a spill in West Shetland, for example? But, but that's why... I got Particularly it, in view of that the sea conditions would be much... Quite different, much different. Much, much, much different. different. I agree with you entirely. And that's why, with the risk of repeating myself, I, I go to this, this chain. First is prevention. Secondly is is actually not not saying, did we get the spill length wrong? Mm -hmm. What have we learned to, to Macondo to make the spill length as short as possible? What resources do we need to be able to look, to, to be able to cap any well? Mm -hmm. um, so, so one of the elements of, of one of the groups in Osprey is to look at the, the BOPs at work in the North Sea 
and look at uh, the, the variety of different connections one would have into them to make sure that we can design equipment that's available to the industry that can that ta that can be that can be uh, co-located with any of these these uh, the, the, these, uh, these these blowout preventers on, on on top of the wells. So that's it. That's a key element. It's not a question of we we underestimate it. Let's take that underestimation and say, okay, how do we make sure that if such an event occurred, we could deal with it as quickly as possible? And, and finally, just one yeah. final question. Um, in the government, I mean, as I understand, BP were under licence BP, they were spraying dispersant at source, mm. which had never been done before. Which makes me, I mean, in terms of permission for that, that's that's the you know the Americans take responsibility, I guess, for allowing that to happen. I mean, the point is, is that we don't actually know what the environmental impact of doing that is. I mean, it could be, for instance, that, that oil is sitting at <coughs> 250 metres under the sea, couldn't it, as we speak. So in view of that, I mean, do you think that sort of subsurface dispersant usage would be used in the, light, in, in, in the case of if it happened in West Shetland? And would we, going back to what you were saying earlier about the impact upon neighbouring countries, I mean, would we have to sort of tell the Danish with regards to Faroe Islands or mm. that sort of thing. And, uh, and, I mean, there are no plans at the moment to use uh, dispersants at, at source within what we're looking at. However, uh, you know, the, the key thing here, and I'm going back to your earlier question about expertise, this is the area where expertise is most needed because we have a comp very, very different marine environment uh, in terms of That's the waves, true. in terms of dispersed, you know, sorry, natural dispersants of the dis dispersal of the oil. And so that's a, that, that is a key element of the Osprey work, is making sure that our modelling of the oil spills, our understanding of the use of dispersants, are as well informed as, as possible. And that's probably the longest wavelength piece of work that we'll, we'll do within this whole, this whole process. It's not within our area. I mean, along, along the same issue, in, in government said the liability was 75 million US. Is that all right? Which probably ran out after about two weeks. Well, there was a, there, so again, I mean, another so, I mean, I'm just looking at the yeah. figures. Yeah, that you've got, you're suggesting you're going up to 250 million. Yes. When do you see that being the case or is that going to be retrospectively is it going to cover West Shetland? Are you licensed yes, to the Yes, every well job from now on. And, yes. I, and I, I think are we, we're talking over a billion dollars already at BP. I mean the reality is if it wasn't such an organisation as, as, as big as BP yeah. they would have gone bust. Yeah. I mean it was and, and that's why again, you know, the, the chain here is the, 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 the the design and the regulation around the drilling of the wells to, 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 to limit the possibility of this happening. Second priority is the early containment. You know, a lot of the cost for BP was was because it took time to design mm. these. If we can look at what they've learned, and, and and some of the things we're looking at is, as I've said before, find, finding a uh, designing a piece of equipment that's uh, able to go on any of the, the BOPs that are, are ready mm. in the North Sea, so that we can contain this in days and actually keep it within that limit. Yeah, I mean, I. I it is somewhat surprising to me that you, you didn't actually have contingencies in place that you knew worked prior to, to actually sort of setting up the, 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 the you know, you, 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 what you're saying is, is that, thank God we've had a spill in the Gulf of Mexico because now we know how to deal, deal with it. I mean, if I adopted that approach in medicine, I mean, you know, I'd end up in court. I, I, so it surprises me that, that that you went to point of, not you personally, but you drill at that sort of depth and you didn't actually know how to plug a hole if it did occur. And that makes me sort of wonder, I mean, I've, I've been shown this sort of grid of um, high consequence probability grid. Sure. And it looks as if this sort of low sort of probability high consequence event, it doesn't really allow for that, that sort of scenario. In, in the plans that I've seen, do you think we need something more specific for, for incidents that are as, you know, as unlikely and as as, as, as we've seen in, in the Gulf of Mexico? Mm. Do you think we need something more specific, a plan for that type of incident? I, and certainly, that is of, that's certainly a major element of the Osprey work. Is is um, first of all planning for an incident such as that, but also actually ensuring that an incident such as that can does, does not happen. Um, you know, we can talk about the industry in general's readiness for such of this in the, mm. uh, before Macondo. It is what it is, but actually, as an industry, you know, we are working flat out with the regulator, with, with the Coast Guard agency, mm. with everybody else, 
to make sure that we, we learn every lesson. But, but you, you would agree, though, that it is somewhat surprising to a layman that, you, that you've instituted as an industry to, to drill at such a depth without actually knowing how you would deal with it if there was a oh, problem. I don't think that's quite... Because, I mean, you're saying you're waiting for sort of... Because essentially, no, I mean... They, I don't they think got, it's quite, we do know how you, to deal. You know, they were sort of shoving sort of old tyres down there. and There was a sense it was almost like, well, God, what can we do next? I, That's the impression the Leyden had, anyway. I, and I, I can quite appreciate that. Um, but what I, what I would say is that the industry was not wholly unprepared. Um, in the final analysis, of course, we know what to do with a, uh, a blowing well in order to kill it. You drill a relief well and you kill the well, and that's well known how we deal with that. Um, I think what, you, what we can also say is that the technology is available to cap flowing wells uh, as well. Uh, what I think maybe we saw in, in Macondo was a, maybe a lack of preparedness of the industry to bring those solutions quickly into place. The solutions are there, but they weren't brought quickly into place. And I think one of the works that Osprag is looking at, and Osprag is not alone in this, the industry around the world is looking at this as well, but is how can we increase our industry preparedness to do that, as Mark said, within a matter of days. That's what we've got to do. And it can be done. It's, it's entirely achievable. It's, this is not new engineering. This is not new science that's needed there. It is actually some good planning and procedures. Just a quick question. Um, is Osprey How about the Falklands? Uh, not at the moment, no. Is it under the same regulatory regime as the UK continental shelf? The, the Falkland Islands? No. no. So it's not. Uh, no. Okay. I just wonder in terms of access to facilities and if you have a big spill. And the Falklands is pretty sort of. I mean, the Argentinians aren't going to be terribly. Yeah. Helpfulness, and not necessarily. Sorry, and I just, so I'm sort of. You caught me unawares with that. I'm, I, I, I just, not, I just suddenly I'm, thought I just, I, I read really an article know. about the full and I'm presuming no, it's the UK I'm territory. Afraid, and I parochially concern myself with the UK and not, not with the full okay. so right. I don't, I don't, it is a different regime. I'm not quite sure what it is. Fine.